Today we will be looking at these five molecules and determining whether it's polar or nonpolar. When a molecule is nonpolar, the net dipole is equal to zero and they all cancel. When it is polar, the net dipole is greater than zero. First we will look at SO3. When you add up the valence electrons from S in the three O's, you get 24 valence electrons. So you can use that to make the Lewis structure over here. Notice I put the partial charges next to each one. You can determine this by using the electronegativity chart. Since S is less electronegative than O, it has a partial charge that is positive. When drawing the molecular geometry, we know that this will be trigonal planar. When you look at the molecular geometry, you can see that all of the dipoles cancel because they're all pointing in opposite directions. So therefore, this molecule is nonpolar. The next molecule we'll look at is OF2. When you add up all of its valence electrons, you get 20 valence electrons. The Lewis structure is shown right here, and it is bent because of the lone pairs that are not bonding. Since O is less electronegative than F, it has a partial positive charge. And when you draw it using the molecular geometry, you can see that not all of the domains are the same, and the central atom bond dipoles do not cancel. Because of these two things, it will be polar. The next molecule we'll look at is BeCl2. When you add up all of its valence electrons, you get 16. You use this to make the Lewis structure. As you can see, this Lewis structure is linear, so you can make the molecular geometry over here. Since Be is less electronegative than Cl, it has a partial positive charge, and Cl, they both have partial negative charges. You can use this to make the dipoles for each side, which you can see they're pointing in opposite directions and will cancel. Since the diagrams are the same on all domains and the dipoles cancel, there's no net dipole and it will be nonpolar. The fourth molecule we'll look at is CCl4. First, we add up all of its valence electrons, which is 32. Then we draw the Lewis structure. After looking at the Lewis structure, you can tell that it'll be tetrahedral, and you can draw the molecule with its molecular geometry. C is less electronegative, and it's in the middle, so it has a partial positive charge. All the CLs have partial negative charges because it's more electronegative. Then you can draw all the dipoles that point in opposite directions. All the domains are on this all domains are the same on the central atom and the dipoles cancel so there is no net dipole and this molecule is also nonpolar. Next we will look at O3. Oxygen has 6 valence electrons and there are 3 of them so total is 18 valence electrons. We use this to make the Lewis structure. And from the Lewis structure, we know that the molecular geometry is bent. So we can draw the molecule over here to give us a better picture of what's going on. There's a lone pair, so the domains are not all the same. And they do not cancel. This is a picture of the dipoles. And you can see that they do not cancel. Therefore, O3 is polar. Now, it is easy to make some mistakes, and here are some of the common ones. You can incorrectly draw molecular geometry, which could mess up your whole problem because you'll have the wrong picture in your head. 
And another common mistake is not using the electronegativity chart correctly and getting the wrong partial charges. Hopefully you learned something from this video. Thank you.